Hello and welcome to this demonstration of how to build your own DVD rack. In this demonstration I'm going to show you how to use Artcam Express to design a cheap and easy to assemble personalized DVD rack. I will then create the toolpaths necessary to machine this design on a CNC machine. First of all click the open model button. Here I'm going to select a picture which I saved earlier and this will help me with the design of my DVD rack. Once this is loaded I need to set a model size. So I'm going to input a width of 700mm which is roughly going to be the height of my DVD rack. The next thing I'm going to do is reduce the colours of the bitmap down to 2. This will make it easier to use. I can do this by clicking this icon and inputting the number 2. I can now set my primary colour as black and I can open up the bitmap to vector tool. Here I can simply click create vectors and then if I close this tool and if I reduce the contrast of the bitmap I can clearly see the vectors I've just created. Now I'm simply going to right click and copy these vectors and I'm going to close the model. I'm now going to open a new model and here I'm going to input my material size. To fit all the components of the DVD rack on, I want a width of 600, a height of 750 and a thickness of 10mm. Now I can right click and paste down the vectors which I created earlier. I'm going to use the transform tool to rotate these vectors so they're standing vertically upwards. I'm then going to drag it into position within the model. Once I'm happy with the positioning I want to edit the vectors slightly. As you can see the movie reels are in different segments at the moment. I want to join all of these segments together and so to do this I'm going to use the node editor. This now displays the nodes of the vectors. If I hover over the nodes and press C on the keyboard this cuts the vector. So I'm going to do this at both sides of the vector and then delete this line. I'm going to do the same for the top segment and delete this line. Now I can join the outer lines together which will merge the segments. I can do this by highlighting both lines, right clicking and selecting join vectors with a smooth line. This has joined the left hand line and now if I right click and select close vectors with a smooth line, this closes the right hand line. I can repeat this process to join up all the other segments until I have one complete outer vector. Now the shape can be further edited to allow assembly with other parts. Firstly I'm going to create a slot near the bottom of the vectors. To allow space for this I'm first going to move this vector upwards. And I'm going to do this using the node editor and cutting the baseline of the vector and then cutting a section from each side of the vector and deleting it. I can then move the bottom vector up again and rejoin it together with each side. Again by right clicking and selecting join vector but this time I'm going to join it by moving the endpoints and the same for closing the vector. I can then use the rectangle tool to create the slot with a width of 80mm and a height of 10mm which is the material thickness. I can then use the transform tool to give the slot a central position. Next I'm going to create a couple more rectangles at the top of the vector and these rectangles will create a seat for the top part of the DVD rack. So I'm going to give the rectangle a height of 10mm and a width of 22mm. I'm then going to reposition this on the corner and then holding control and alt I'm going to click and drag the rectangle across to the other corner and move it into position. Now I can just check that my top part will fit in by creating a rectangle and checking the width of the gap. The width here is just over 80mm so my top part should be able to slot in. I'm then going to use the node editor to join the rectangles to the large outer vector. 
I'm going to use the same technique I've used previously and I'm going to do this for both of the rectangles. Having completed this and joined them by moving the endpoints, I now have a seat for the top part of the DVD rack. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of the vectors and I'm going to deselect the outer vector and also this slot vector. Now I'm going to use this tool to group all the remaining vectors together. This will be useful for later on when creating toolpaths. So now I need to create the slots for my DVDs. And again I'm going to use the rectangle tool to create these slots. And I'm going to give this rectangle a height of 15mm and a width of 135mm which is just over the typical width and height of a DVD case. I can either create the slots by simply dragging the vectors into place or I can use a special tool. So to use this tool, first I'm going to cut the right hand vector to give myself a guide curve. I'm going to cut this vector near the top and near the bottom. And then I'm going to select my rectangle and then also select the guide curve and click this tool which is the paste along a curve tool. If I then enter the number of copies I want and click paste, this generates copies of the rectangle along the curve. But at the moment the orientation isn't right, so I'm just going to undo that. I'm simply going to rotate this rectangle around to a vertical position then once again I'm going to select the rectangle and then the guide curve and I'm going to click paste again and this time my rectangle has been copied down the curve in a suitable way. This gives you an impression of what the DVD rack might look like. Now I can delete this rectangle and some of the slots are pointing downwards which means the DVDs wouldn't stay in. So to remedy this I'm going to ungroup these vectors and now simply taking each one that I want to change I can use the transform tool to rotate it slightly so that it's no longer pointing downwards. Once I've completed this for all the necessary slots I can see what my DVD rack will look like. If any slots are pointing upwards too much then I can do the opposite and rotate the other way. And Now I think I'm happy with my slot positioning and so I'm simply going to click and drag around all the slots and group these back together. Now the design for one side of my DVD rack is complete. I can highlight all of the vectors and I can use the mirror tool to create a copy which can be used for the other side of my DVD rack. When copying I need to ensure that the copy original objects box is ticked. Now I can reposition these new vectors to give it a bit of space for the toolpaths and now I have both sides of my DVD rack complete. The next thing I need to do is create the top and bottom parts of the DVD rack. To do this I'm going to generate a rectangle and give it the dimensions of 190mm by 80mm. I'm then going to create another rectangle with the dimensions 170 and 120mm. I can now reposition these rectangles until the centre points snap together and I can check this with the position of the blue dot of each rectangle. Now I want to cut the inside vectors and to do this I'm going to use the trim tool and simply cut each of the inside vectors. Now once again I need to join these vectors together by moving the endpoints. Once this is done I can select this vector and holding control drag and copy it downwards and now I have the top and bottom parts of my DVD rack. The model size seems to be too small to fit all of the parts on and so I'm simply going to highlight all of my parts and copy the vectors and then I can click model and set size and increase the width which will also increase the height maintaining the aspect ratio. Now if I delete all these vectors I can paste down the ones I copied and these are the correct size still on the new model. I can now drag the top and bottom into the material 
and I'm ready to start creating my toolpaths. To create the toolpaths I need to click on this icon and then first of all I'm going to create a profile toolpath. I'm going to select the outline of each of my parts and select a profiling tool. I can then give this toolpath a name and calculate it. If I close this tool now we can see that the calculated toolpath is shown in red and is going to cut around the outside of my vectors. I can then hide this toolpath by selecting these light bulbs and now I can create the next toolpath. I'm going to select these slot vectors including the ones at the bottom and I'm going to create another profile toolpath. This time I'm going to change the profile to inside the vectors and I'm going to select a slightly smaller tool. I can then give this toolpath a name and calculate. Again I can hide these toolpaths and now I want to create the pattern on each side of the DVD rack. So to do this I'm going to select these vectors which I grouped earlier and open the area clearance toolpaths. Here I need to select a start depth and a finish depth and I'm going to give this a finish depth of just 2mm. Again I need to select a tool so I'm going to select the 5mm tool again and again I can give this toolpath a name and press calculate. This generates a slightly more complex toolpath as it's cutting a lot more material. Now that all my toolpaths are complete I can move into the 3D view and I can right click on toolpaths and select simulate all toolpaths. This shows me how the CNC machine will follow these toolpaths to cut the components out. If I take a top view I can see this more clearly and then by clicking this icon I can delete the waste material. The material can also be changed within the simulation toolbar by selecting this drop down menu. I'm going to choose a light oak material and click apply. So now we can see roughly what the design will look like when it comes out of the CNC machine. Now that I'm happy with this I can once again click on toolpaths and click save toolpaths. Here I can save the toolpath separately and append the details into the file names. I can then choose a machine file format that my CNC machine will recognise and I can give the file a name and click save. Now the toolpaths are ready to be imported into the machine and the components can be manufactured and assembled together. Thank you for watching and enjoy making your DVD rack using Arkham Express.